All right, so now we're gonna go into the last part of our analysis, which is the x-ray analysis. Again, I can't explain enough how important this is and how much this affects patient care, okay? Because it's the difference between adjusting an L5 and a sacrum. It's the difference between adjusting a lot of different things in a lot of different directions. And that little bit of negligence to say it's not important will actually be drastically different in your patient care. Because there will be so many times that doc, God said docs have told me that if I didn't use an x-ray, I probably won't be practicing right now based on how many times it saved me from hurting a patient because of how I may be understanding everything in my other parts of the analysis. But then when I get the blueprint to the spine, I get a very, very firm understanding of how this patient presents. You wouldn't let a dentist nor a surgeon ever do any of their interventions on you without them first seeing what they're touching. So to see is to know, to not see is to guess. And I don't know about anyone else, I don't wanna put my license on the line by guessing and being indifferent and not giving the patient the best care they can get on the first visit and every visit thereafter. So, no. so enough about that and let's get into some of the way x-rays present and what we see in the patient's spine. So in this case, an AS, an ASIN, or an AS major or IN major will have certain presentations in the patient's spine. So again, going over the AS or IN major, that means it can be an ASEX, but it's an AS of 10 and an EX of three. Again, this is why specificity is so important and you can never get the results you can get with specificity if you don't use specificity. So what we will see with an AS, as you can see, the pelvis rocks anterior superior and the, if, and the sacrum does exactly what we just described with our palpation. As this rocks anterior superior, the sacrum will rock posterior. So what that does is as the sacrum rocks posterior, that will straighten out the lordosis of the spine, making the spine hypolordosis. And, and this is the same thing for the PI, the EX, the PIEX, or the PI major or EX major. As the ilium will rock posterior inferior, or external, it will cause the sacrum to go forward. The sacrum and the ilium react counterintuitively to each other. So as this goes this way, the other goes the other way. So as you can see, as this rocks posterior, this rocks anterior, the lordosis will be very extreme on the x-ray. So those are some things that we're really looking for, okay? So as we're watching this, we will look for the lumbar lordosis. Will it be straight or will it be even more extreme than normal? This will tell us and give us a little bit of a clue whether or not it's a PI or EX or AS or IN involved, okay? So that's why we can use that as another way to help us as we draw our lines. We have a very specific line analysis that we use as well. So all of these can combine to help tell you what is going on with the patient's pelvis. Okay, so now we're gonna go into a very big topic that is in the Gonstead world, and it is knowing when to adjust an ilium versus sacrum, okay? So now that we kind of went over our analysis of how to find each of these, and there are some times in our analysis, there are two things at two different directions. So one thing might tell us the ilium's a problem, another thing might tell us the sacrum's a problem. How do we differentiate between these? I'm gonna tell you how right now. So now we're deciding whether to adjust the ilium to the sacrum or the sacrum to the ilium. And there are a few very important keys that we must know, okay? So one of the things is that we don't even consider adjusting the sacrum on the side of a PI, an EX, a PI EX, or a PI major EX major, okay? We do not want to adjust it on that side because if you just look at simple mechanics of the spine, if this rocks posterior inferior, look at the gap that's in that space right there. If we push this sacrum down, we're going to make the gap even worse. And that's why we can never adjust the sacrum on the side of the PI or EX. It'll make that gap worse and make even more edema 
and more fluid in that area. So you might have a rotated sacrum on this side, but you're gonna have a PIEX. No matter how rotated that sacrum is, if you push this down, look how much more gap this joint becomes and that is just very problematic for the patient. So we always want to approximate segments together. That is our goal. So in the case of a PIEX or PIEX, we want to approximate the ilium to the sacrum in our correction, okay? Now, if the segment is posterior on an AS or IN, and that's causing some dysfunction, now we get to go into the SASIN listing, okay? So how we do this is all of our other findings are pointing towards an ASIN subluxation. So what we have to do is this is one of the many few times we use a leg check. And this is not your normal leg check where we bend the legs. We don't do that because of how unreliable that is. You can have an atlas subluxation causing a leg to be longer or shorter. So we don't want to use that to tell us, is there an ilium problem? So let's just quickly go over what that AS and IN will show us. So an AS and an IN should lengthen the leg. Let's just look at this here. As this ilium rocks anterior superior or internal and rides up the articulation, our femur head and our leg will drop down. So on the side of the AS or IN, we would expect this leg to be longer. Again, this is not a comparative study from this leg to this leg. It is comparative to the MD and AD that we get on the x-ray. So if we have an actual deficiency of four millimeters, that means that this leg is short by four millimeters. But our ASIN of, let's just say 10 is there, and it's giving us a measured deficiency of a different number. Now we're expecting, we know that there is four millimeters of leg length deficiency on that side. Little side note, there's been a study that shows over 92% of patients in this world have an anatomical short leg. So us just trying to adjust people to get legs even is actually making a functional issue. So that's why it's very important to know how long each leg is so you don't make them even by sight but dysfunctional by function, okay? So what we're trying to do here is we know that there is four millimeters of a short leg on the right side with an ASIN, okay? So we're expecting that ASIN to make the leg shorter by less than four or even longer than the left leg, okay? So since that ASIN is lengthening the leg, it might be two millimeters now, or it could even be longer than the left leg. But if we don't have this information before we start, we're gonna always think that it's just short and long. That's not what we're doing. We have to be very specific to be scientific to our patient. So as this leg gets longer, we are going to expect when we lay the patient prone to see this right side have a leg that's longer than four millimeters short. That might sound a little tongue twisting, but think about it. We want that leg to be less than four millimeters short on that side if it's actually an ASIN. Okay, now when we lay the patient prone and it actually looks to be eight millimeters shorter on that side instead of four, that doesn't sound correct because it's not. So that is telling us that there might be a rotated sacrum on that side that's making that leg short, shorter than expected, okay? So that's why we must put all this information together and help us understand what to adjust and when. A rotated sacrum will act like a posterior inferior ilium. Okay, so a rotated sacrum will make a leg shorter. That is because of the way it rocks up and down the articulation of the SI joint, okay? So that is why we need to be very specific with our leg length. So let's show you what this leg length will look like. Okay, so now we can see that our patient is prone. And what we're going to be looking for is what the leg length is doing. 
So let's say we're staying with our example that we used before, and we had a four millimeter short leg with an AS or an IN on the right side. As we come over, we see that the right leg is short, and it's short by a few millimeters. So if we had an ASIN, we would expect this leg to be even longer like this. This is what we would expect for an ASIN. But since on the side of the ASIN, it is this short, we are now expecting a SASIN on the right side. So now after watching that, we are now able to see whether or not to adjust the sacrum to the ilium or the ilium to the sacrum. And that test is very, very helpful to understand based on simple biomechanics of the spine and the pelvis. So also something we must keep in mind and why it is so important to take an x-ray is because if you have a rotated sacrum on one side to the left, let's say, I mean, rotated on the right side, I'm sorry, rotated on the right here, we would expect the spinuses up the spine to be on the left now because this is rotated to the right, the spine follows to the foundation and will go left. Sometimes it doesn't go all the way up to C2, especially if it's been crying because the body adapts. So let's say all the way up at T2, it stops going to the left and starts a right rotation up here. Now we must be aware of this by our x-ray analysis. We can see that once we fix this and bring this forward, now this is going to get even worse. So we can expect to find another subluxation right here, but we're not gonna automatically always do it. We're just gonna re-scope and reanalyze to see if there's a finding right there. You can see how off this will be, and then we have the writing reflex bringing us back forward. So this can be a very big problem of dysfunction and why utilizing our entire analysis can be extremely helpful to helping the patient with their specific problems. I wanted to thank everyone. I wanted to take, thank my partner, Brittany, today for helping me make this video for everyone. We will be making our Friday Club videos coming up shortly, and we will also have an announcement about Dr. Meisel's pit. We probably will be online for it uh, for the next few weeks until we can get back into class. I hope we get back into class soon because all of this stuff is a lot easier to do and understand when we're in person. But for right now, try and find a partner that you can work with and just go through this stuff and practice it. You will never get good at this profession if you don't consistently practice it and make this your life. So um, I hope this was helpful for the advanced club and also for the fundamental side that is still learning fundamentals that saw this. This is where you guys are gonna be in a couple quarters. So just keep coming, keep working hard, and I guarantee you guys will be amazing chiropractors. Okay, so thank you for listening. I hope we reached a lot of people and I hope you guys um, can also read the sheets we put on. Uh, Steven Negrati is the one that made our sheets. So thank you, Steven. He's our officer in training and he actually put some questions at the end of the sheet. You guys can comment below, uh, reach out to us and say what your answer is and we'll give you feedback and why your answer is correct or incorrect and it's a learning experience for everyone. So thank you guys again, and I hope we get to be back together in person soon.